Ladies and gents, boys and girls, this is your host, Rebel, live. And in this episode, I'm just going to discuss SBF and FTX drama. That's all we have. Beside Bitcoin going down, sitting at 16,656 and taking the rest of the altcoins with it. And that's the situation. But market right now. Lunacy is in green. Irony. For no reason. And before I begin getting the news, I'm going to keep it short. Might have another video later on. But um, yesterday, I did a live. It went on for four hours. Yeah, four hours long. And those of you tuned in live and asked questions, thank you. It was fun. And I plan on doing it a lot more often starting next year. All right. And I did take it private because it was four hours long. Nobody wants to watch a four hours long video. And uh, instead of adding timestamps, I plan on breaking them are, um, apart. Okay, smaller chunks, whichever is useful. I'm going to upload it down the road. Okay, starting tonight. Okay, so you didn't miss anything. Just stay tuned if you're interested to watch them. All right, so now let's get back on news. Let's see what's happening. FTX Sam Backman Freed borrowed from Alameda to buy Robinhood shares. Alameda took out a loan pledging those same shares as collateral. So he literally took out loans to buy positions in different companies, like buy stake. Fraud over fraud. In an affidavit provided to a Caribbean cor um, court before his arrest, Backman Freed said he and FTX co founder Gary Vang together borrowed over $546 million, half a billion dollars, from Alameda via promissory notes in April and May. They used that money to capitalize Emergent Fidelity Technologies Limited, the shell corporation that in May bought a 7.6% stake of Robinhood. So if I'm not getting this wrong, Alameda gets money, well, got money from user funds, and Gary Vang and SBF borrowed from Alameda, which were the user funds. So the user were getting nothing while these guys were capitalizing on new stakes and buying stakes in the you know new companies and equity and stuff extreme fraud daffy david provides a new curveball in the three-way race to lay claim to the 56 million Robinhood shares crypto lender blockfi ftx group and bankman freed himself have all attempted to lay claim to the shares which could be worth over 440 million dollars crypto lender blockfi which like ftx has filed a bankruptcy alleged in a court document that it has owed the rights to the Robinhood shares due to the deal bankman fed fried made in early November. The shares were pledged as collateral against a loan taken out by Lameda Research. Okay. Wow. It's a complete mess. By the way, SBF is going in for a long time. I mean, if when convicted, bad. The shares were pledged as collateral. The same firm whose funds were used to purchase the shares to begin with, according to Tuesday's filing. Next news. New judge assigned in SBF fraud case. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan has replaced Ronnie Abrams, who re rec uh, recused, recussed, how do you say this, herself because of a potential conflict of interest. Whoa, this is scary. When you have all these things happen, you kind of wonder if there's any con conspiracy going on. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan has been assigned to presale, preside over the fraud case against former FTX CEO Sam Bankman fried Kaplan replaces U.S. District Judge Ronnie Abrams, who recused herself from the case or recused excuse recused recuse herself from the case on um friday because of a potential conflict of interest because her husband is a partner at law firm davis okay conflict of interest which is advising parties possibly adverse to ftx and bankman fried in the exchange bankruptcy proceeding according to abrams okay so her spouse is doing the opposite so of course conflict of interest bankman fried is under house arrest on a 250 million bond and is scheduled to appear before the federal court on Jan 3. Kaplan was appointed to the Manhattan Federal Court by President Bill Clinton in 1994 and has presided over a number of high-profile cases, including Chevron's 2014 appeal of an environmental case in which he ruled in favor of the oil giant, the 2021 sexual assault case brought against Prince Andrew of Virginia, which was settled out, out of court, okay? So Clinton, Epstein, Epstein Island, what's happening here? Next news, Justice Department launches criminal probe into 4 million FTX hack. hack? Experts have suggested the digital fingerprints left by the alleged hacker points to an inside job. The U.S. Department of Justice has reportedly launched a criminal probe into the alleged hack that drained nearly four million out of FTX control wallets the night Bahamas-based exchange filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, if you remember, such a convenient hack had to happen right before the bankruptcy. So finally, U.S. Department of Justice launched a criminal probe. Between November 11 and the early hours, um, hours of November 12, massive outflows of cryptocurrencies began moving out of FTX and FTX U.S. wallets. Multiple FTX employees told Twitter sleuth Zach Expedy that they didn't recognize the transfers. Over an hour after the suspected hack began, 
FTX general counsel Ryan Miller tweeted that his company was investigating abnormalities with wallet movements and later pinned a message in FTX official Telegram support channel. FTX has been hacked. FTX apps are malware. <laughs> Delete them. Chat is open. Don't go on FTX site. Yeah, just quit. Delete it. So don't worry about it while we drain the funds. You guys just don't touch the app. Delete it. The official FTX Twitter account remained silent throughout the pandemonium. In the afternoon of November 12th, FTX CEO John Ray Ray 3, John Ray Ray, J Ray, confirmed the hack through a statement posted via Miller's Twitter account and said they were in contact with law enforcement. The criminal investigation is separate from the fraud case against disgraced former CEO Sam Bankfried. This is a separate case. Who also said authorities have been able to freeze a portion of the stolen funds. Fire, um, Wire transfer uh, conspiracy fraud, basically, right? Money laundering. Man, how many frauds in there? And then you have this one, the hack, whatever, is being investigated. Ellison and Vang are game changers in Backman Free's trial lawyer says. So they are the one who's giving testimony. The snitches. Snitch. Wow. SBF, these are your friends, amigo. The testimony of the two. FTX insiders could be damning for Backman Freed as he fights criminal charges, according to Ian Ekenley, a partner of Ken Group. Now you have two people, two insiders, who were with him. Yeah, that's extremely dangerous. Presumably during all of the pivotal moments at stake in the case saying, we conspired with each other, um, with others, presumably Sam Bankman fried and we intentionally did something wrong. Last week, Alison and Vang pleaded guilty to charges. Sam and uh, SBF didn't plead guilty. Pleaded guilty to charges related to collapse of FTX, a crypto exchange that Bankman fried ran. The duo admitted that they knew of half -desert relationship between Alameda Research, a trading firm that Bankman Freed also owned, and FTX um, and the alleged mismanagement of customer firms. According to McGinley, that makes Bankman Freed's defense even more challenging, adding that it will be very difficult to, for Bankman Freed's counsel to overcome two cooperating witnesses rather than one. When you get two co cooperating witnesses, it's much harder to make that case before a jury. Yeah. Emphasizing again that while the outcome remains to be seen, it is uh, very much a game changer. And they're also insider, not just random witnesses. They were with him. Longer than most of uh, most others, I'm sure. Bangor Freed, who faces criminal charges for wire and securities fraud, money laundering, and campaign finance violations, poor, may not be able to bargain his way out. The prosecutor's leniency relies on evidence against someone else. And because Bangor Freed was head of FTX, it's very hard to see how he could cooperate at all. Bangor Freed, whose parents posted their home in Palo Alto, California, as collateral for his bail, is scheduled to appear in federal court in New York on Jan 3 which is just about in a week. Bad year for Sam, not a good new year. And then we have just a uh, similar news on the other side. Carolyn Ellison knew that it was wrong, it implicates Sam Bankman fried pointing out fingers now. The former CEO collapsed algorithmic trading firm, firm Alameda told the judge that she agreed to discreet form, um, disgraced former FTX CEO Sam Bankman fried in providing materially misleading financial statement to Alameda's lenders. Wow. The court asked her to clarify, did you also know that it was illegal? Yes. Ellison, along with FTX founder Gary Vang, pleaded guilty last week to federal charges in connection with the roles in the frauds that contributed to FTX collapse and both are cooperating with the Southern District of New York. I agreed with Mr. Bankman Freed with others not to publicly disclose the true nature of the relationship between Alameda and FTX, including Alameda's credit arrangement, she said. Dangerous. I'm here today to accept responsibility for my actions by pleading guilty, she concluded. Nasty. And then we have. What will crypto look like without centralized exchanges? Wow. Long article. Next year, we'll offer tons of business opportunities for crafty entrepreneurs who find unique ways to tackle each of these problems or more than one of the, them at the same time. True, isn't it? Just keep building and don't scam. Focus on building. And I did this video, which I'm going to upload sometimes later. If the intention of the founder, of the developer, okay? If the intention is not clean, if it's dirty, then there's no way you can win in that game, okay? If the intentions are clean and they tried their best to do whatever, but things didn't go that way. That's a totally different story. But that's probably just 0.001% out there, which I see. Most are just coming out for a quick cash grab, and that's it. So, ladies and gents, that's all I have for you. And um, thanks for tuning in. I'll have another video probably later today. And that's all I have for you.